Uh, if you'd like to open up your Bibles, uh, we're going to uh, hear from God's Word in preparation for uh, Isaac coming and sharing uh, with us. I gave a, a little bit of a, a glimpse uh, into the topic of what he's talking about this morning uh, during communion. He's a looking forward and anticipation. One of the greatest passages uh, in the scriptures for looking forward and anticipation of the Lord's return is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, we're going to read from that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verses 13 to 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Come on up, Isaac, share God's word with us. Would you welcome Isaac again? Thank you, Brother Phil. And uh, I'm honored today to stand here and uh, blessed. Now, don't look at this as a, you know, lightly. It's a, it's a blessing to stand here before your people this morning to try and encourage us about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was blessed this morning to see the young people doing worship, singing, and Olivia. Canterbury Warren, and I was blessed to see her leading, leading the uh, worship team this morning, singing. And so as a pastor, it's a blessing to see young people going in for Jesus. And that's what encourages me as a pastor, and, and Phil will tell you the same thing. And it's just a blessing to sit here and hear the singing. A bit about myself, uh, Cuffin Brew Warner, born and bred, little community of about 1,500 people, married, six children, 14 grandchildren, one little fellow's in glory, and 13 are with us. And if you haven't got grandchildren, oh, you're missing out. Because you just want to grab them and you want to squeeze them and you want to love them. So you're special. There's something about grandchildren. And I love my grandchildren dearly. I love all my children, but my grandchildren are just something that's very, very special. This morning, I, I feel a bit like Moses. I'm not a great speaker. There's better speakers than me. My English is not great. But um, I pray this morning that I'll be the burning bush. God can use me for his glory. And as a young fella and not greatly educated, um, there's two men in my life that, or there's women too, but these two men inspired me to be a, a preacher of the word. And <clears throat> these two men were men that reminded me of Moses. One was my old dad stuttered terribly with the B and the P and he couldn't speak fluently. He'd always stutter. But it never stopped him from preaching the word. Another brother was the name of Jeffrey Doolan. He was from Burke, but he lived in Newcastle. Could not read one bit. And he memorized the word of God and he preached the gospel. And so I was inspired by them two men and and I thank God that they were part of my life, especially my old dad and Uncle Jeff. 
I uh, picked this uh, message this morning. As an Aboriginal person at home, at Brewarana, we constantly face with death. And these last three years, I think we've seen more death than we've ever seen in our communities. Even on the way out, been Bradley, on the way out from Bree about seven o'clock uh, yesterday morning, we had a phone call. My niece was found dead. She died in her sleep at the age of 35. Left behind two little young boys and her husband and partner. So we're constantly faced with grief, sorrow. And this message, this message we uh, reading read this morning encourages me. And um, knowing that, like our brother said, we look beyond, we look behind, we remember the death of our Saviour, we look beyond the coming of our Saviour. And um, as children of God, remember this, we were born and placed in this time such as this. And we're living in a time where things are not great. The Christian faith has been challenged. We see great events taking place throughout the world that are very frightful, are, are fearful. We've just seen, a, and we're still in it, the pandemic that's taken so many lives and, and uh, I don't know how people live without knowing Jesus. I don't know how they survive. You know, and as Christians, as children of God, and we read God's word, and we see the events taking place throughout the world today, and we read the word of God, and we see God's word being fulfilled right before our very eyes the things that have taken place. We're seeing four shadows of the tribulation period that are coming very soon. Things that are happening. We see how, our, how, the, how the world can control people through fear. We see that. We see the great earthquakes, tsunamis. We see famine. And we see pestilence, disease, rampant throughout the world. Well, these things are gonna, gonna become so great in the tribulation period, but we're seeing glimpses of it, of what's gonna take place in the tribulation. So the next great event on the calendar of God's word, the next great prophecy to take place is the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we as children of God got to be ready. We got to be watching. And we got to be waiting. We got to be waiting. See, there's no signs to the, to the rapture of the, of the church. But we can see signs to the tribulation. We can see all the things taking place right now. Or what's going to take place in the tribulation. We see the, the armies. Going down against Israel, we see the rise of China, we see Russia, we see all these things happening. Like a big jigsaw puzzle, puzzle coming together. Brothers and sisters, the return of Jesus Christ is right upon us. Soon, the trumpet's going to sound. And we're going to be going out. The Bible says there'll be two in the field, one will be taken and one left. There'll be two in the bed, one saved and one lost. The saved be gone one left. This is called the rapture of the church. What an exciting time to look forward to. What a blessing. What a hope we have. Even beyond the grave, as we, if we leave the scene right now, what a hope we have in Jesus Christ. encourage us to, to really uh, 
look and be ready for the coming of the Lord. Before I read, I just want to say thank you, brother, for the check. I really forgot. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, greatly appreciated. And uh, just what we, um, Andrew had been on the river convention with us. I think brother came out for a few days. Yeah. We do uh, convention every year. We go out outreach to the communities. But it's not only once. We, we go out a number of times a year. We take gear and, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, be a blessing to have something where we can just put everything on and turn up in the park or in the footy over and set up and preach the gospel. And that's what we're about, getting outside our building and, and preaching the gospel. And we want to say thank you for that offering. And um, I remember a few years back, four years ago, I think it was, we were on the river bank at Brewarna having a river convention. And I set my little PA up, started singing, and next minute this, this bloke reversed in. For the Andrew. And he said, I've got something for you, mate. When he opened up this beautiful, excellent voice speakers, PA system, far greater than the one I had. And we've been using it ever since. And now it's part of the church. So you have blessed us over and over again, not just with things like that, but with the children that come from this place to be warned. I have never met an unrespected child. They always show respect. And uh, we're blessed to have the, this church, this school, come and visit us. What a blessing it is. And... Uh, Lord willing, next year we'll have our Christian school. Brother Phil, be part of that. A number of people here, but what a blessing. You know, this is incredible. And we want to thank God for what's taking place. Praise the Lord. But, uh, yeah, this uh, message this morning, I'll get back to this message this morning. Christians ask, what about those who have died? And you may ask the question yourself, what about, like I say, what about my grandchild? Where is he? Well, his body's asleep. The word cemetery says in, or we say motel. The body's asleep in the motel. He said, but I want what? I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. So our loved ones in Christ are asleep. Their body sleep. The soul and spirit's gone to be with the maker, eh? God. Paul said, I'd rather depart and be with Christ, which is far greater. <laughs> what, a, what a hope. What a promise we have. I'd rather depart and be with Christ, which is far greater but it's more profitable to me to be in the flesh. The same as us. Every breath we got left in us, let us be, be profitable and serve the Lord and lead others to know Jesus. He says, lest you sorrow with others who have no hope. And uh, nearly five months ago, I lost my mum. Uh, I sorrowed, but it wasn't a hopelessness. It was a sorrow. Mum, I'm going to miss you. Oh, Mum, I'm going to miss you. But Mum, you only just up there. Your body sleep out here. And you're up there now with Dad. You're up there with your sisters, and your mother. And Mum, soon I'm going to be with you. So yeah, we sorrow, but, but this sorrow is not a dead, hopeless sorrow. We can rejoice that they're going to be in that place that they prepared for. They serve God. And um, we're going to meet them again, either by death or by the coming of our Lord. So that makes me rejoice and, and uh, uh, makes me so glad within 
to know that it's not the end. I'm going to see your grandson that I've never spent time with, but I'm going to spend time with him in glory. But most of all, it's the Father's house. The Father's house. John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, many mansions. We're going to go and visit our Father, our Heavenly Father. He's, he's the one. <clears throat> we're going to visit him, and we're going to be with him for all eternity. And we can say, let not your hearts be troubled, because it is a troubling time. And it must have been a troubling time when, when, the, when the disciples was, was, was there, when, when Jesus went to the cross, and they seen the terrible death and, 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 and torture and, and, and slaughter. And how it must have looked for the disciples. And sometimes this world could look like that for us. Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Things that look, look frightful and, 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 and you know, we can be troubled within, but Jesus said, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. He'd been preparing this place for over 2,000 years. What took him seven, seven, six days to create the earth and the stars and the galaxies. What's heaven going to be like? You get excited? I do. I get excited about this place called heaven. The other, the other day I was in Dubbo and uh, on my own in my caravan. And I, you might have seen this show, but called Passion to Christ. You see it to the show. Some people love it, some people don't, but I didn't mind it. And as I was watching that show and I seen how Jesus was treated and seen them terrible whipping and the flesh being torn from his back and from his side and, and the agonizing humiliation and, and, and the spitting and the, the, the terrible treatment that was placed upon Jesus that day and the crown of thorns that were pushed into his brow and the blood run down his face and as I watched it I started to tear up with tears in my eyes Lord you've done that for me Lord, you, you've done that for me. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to be there, Lord, to see you in all your glory. What a day that'll be. We think of the cross and we see, you know, when God took him and he said, he went to the cross and he said, Lord, if, Father, if there's any, any way possible this cup could pass from me. Is there any other way, Lord? Father, God, is there any other way? God didn't even speak. Three times he asked, this, can this cup pass from me? And then the words of Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Well, what a, a loving father we have. We don't fully comprehend this love. Our human brain can't comprehend this, this mighty love and grace and, 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 and mercy that God has for us. We can't fully comprehend it, not yet. We think we can. But we can't fully comprehend this, this great love, this great mercy that God has for you and me. One day we're going to be in his presence. Physically with our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. So when the resurrection day happens, when we, the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Our loved ones who died in Christ are going to rise first. I heard about say they're going to get, take off first because they're six foot under. But all I know is they're going to rise first. God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For if we say, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain till the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who have fallen asleep. 
For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. <coughs> and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet our Lord in the air. Brothers and sisters, there's going to be a reunion like never seen before in the history of this world. A reunion. And I often think about this reunion in the, in the, in the sky and in the clouds. And, and uh, our bodies are going to be changed. And uh, they're going to be changed. It's like Jesus' body was changed. We're never going to know sickness again. We're never going to know pain. We're never going to know death. It's hard to imagine that. Very hard to imagine that. When Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross and he rose the third day, he defeated hell, he defeated death, he defeated sin. He defeated them. We're going to meet those who we miss so much. You miss your loved ones? I do. I do. I miss them terribly. And we're going to be there with them, with God and uh, with our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be sitting around the throne of God. We had some beautiful singing this morning. But we're going to be singing up there with the angels. Can you imagine it? My people focus on, 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 on the future. We looked at the past this morning, but that past is so so relevant for, for now because we, 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 we always look at the cross and, and see where our sins were, were dealt with. And we keep thanking God and glorifying God for, for this relationship being born into the family of God. And now we look forward to the last event. God wants us to be with him. He longs for us the bride of Christ to be with him. You men who are married, you long to be with your bride. We do that. But God, Father, we're the bride of Christ. We're the bride and he longs to be with us physically. All his children, the church and the places and as we, like I said, as we see the events taking back place throughout the world, the Bible says we don't know the day nor the hour. I can't give you a day nor hour that Jesus will return. But we forget, he said, you don't know the day nor the hour, but you can see the day fast approaching. And, and today we can see things happening so fast in the world. Things are changing so quick in the world. Things are happening fast. Things we've never thought we'd see are happening so quick. We can see the day fast approaching. Christ is coming. My brothers and sisters, don't, don't give up on the brink of a miracle. Don't give in. God is still on the throne. He's still on the throne. Things might look uncertain, fearful, but God's still on the throne. And we're living in so many uncertain times now. We, we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. <coughs> we don't know. But God knows. And Brad could tell you, my favorite reading in God's word, i got a favorite chapter that I love. Romans 8. Start with, there's no condemnation. To those who are in Christ Jesus. And ends with there's no separation. There's no separation. God said, I got you in my hands. Nothing can take you from me. You're mine and you're mine for all eternity. We think sometimes in our walk, where's God in all this? Where's God? Things are happening. God, why this? Why that? Where? Where? Child, I'm in you. I got you. Trust me. Trust me. 
And what a time we're living in to trust God. Oh, we need to trust God. Once we step out of the trust of God, we start getting anxiety. We start getting fear overwhelming us in, in, our, in, our, in our, our fleshy physical state. But if we trust God, it says your death, dad, was determined before your birthday. Am I going to get COVID? Am I going to die? Am I going to get the flu? Well, God knows. God knows when you're going to leave this scene. And I'm going to leave this scene. So what have we got to be fearful about? Death got no sting. Grave got no victory. The victory is in Jesus Christ. We get victory over the grave. Jesus rose again the third day. So he said, I'm the first fruit. You will be the second. Brothers and sisters, we got a wonderful saviour. We got a wonderful hope. Trust him. Trust him. He says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Are they a comfort to you? They are to me. They're a great comfort to me to, to know I can look beyond this place. I can look beyond this broken old world into a place that God prepared for me. And you. A place where I won't see death again. A place where I won't be walking away from my loved ones or they won't be walking away from me again. I will be with them for all eternity. Never ending. Never ending. Paul put it like this in Corinthians 1 and 15, verse 30, or uh, verse 50. For well, this I say, brethren, for well, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corrupt, corruption inherit incorruption. We are tell, behold, I tell you a mystery. Paul, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. If the Lord comes back, we're not going to go to sleep at the, at the grave at the cemetery. We shall not all sleep. He said, but we'll be chained in the twinkling of, of a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Well, this corruption must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption has put on, in, in, on incorruption and this mortal has put on in, immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying, they're saying that is written, death is followed up in victory. Our death, where is your sting? Our Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Be steadfast in the Lord, knowing <coughs> that your labor is not in vain. This last verse I'll finish with. Um, Jesus gives us instructions for the last day. And uh, Timothy talks about difficult, tough, hard days. Timothy 3 talks about in the last day, there's going to be hard times. We can feel it coming. We can see our faith being challenged. All the time, every minute of the day, they're telling us. True heart. We need to draw near to God in this day we're living in.
We've got to get close to God as much as we can. I want to encourage us to get close to God. You got a magnet and you get a little bit of steel. And you put that steel to the magnet and leave it there. That magnet will infuse that steel and it'll become like a magnet too. That's how we are if we draw close to God with a pure heart. Our lives will be changed to be more like Jesus. We'll be strengthened. And when these tough days which are coming upon us right now, we'll be able to stand. Let us draw near to God with a true heart, with full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. And brothers and sisters, I'll speak about this afternoon. I'll just touch on it. Today, today, we have never been challenged like this as God's children, I believe, in all history. Satan is conforming, conforming the world to how he exactly wants it to be. He's conforming the world to his way of thinking. He's conforming the world to do what he wants them to do. And it's sad to say he's doing it through big tech, big tech, telephones, lifestyle, and what he's doing today, I believe there's two, there's more than two, but these two things that Satan's trying to do to you and me. First of all, he's trying to put the light out of the church. He doesn't want the light, the church, to, to, to glow bright in this dark day. So he tries to put the testimony of God's children out. And another one, he's stealing the joy, the joy of the children, God's children. And once we lose the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as our saviour the way we should, we lose our strength. Nehemiah 8, 10 says, the joy of the Lord's my strength. That's where our strength lies, in the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord's my strength. So examine ourselves, am I losing the joy of the Lord? Am I really losing the joy of wanting to go to church? <clears throat> wanting to go to Bible study? Wanting to read my Bible? These are signs to look forward to, that to look at, not look forward to, but signs you notice that Satan start to influence my life. I've got to get back into my word. I've got to get back into the quiet time with Jesus. And then that light starts to glow within us. The joy starts to return. And that's what it's all about. Let the world see Jesus. See Jesus in me. In you. And I pray, look, I love this church. I love this school. And I love the fellowship we have. This is, this is a blessing. God has blessed us. And you've got to pinch yourself sometime, Brother Philip to see the way he blessed us. And I'm, 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 I'm enjoying the ride. I'm loving the ride and fellowship with my brothers and sisters at Green Point. And them children, they're, they're special. Your children are special. God has his hand on this place. I remember when I first came here and I cried in the auditorium when I seen all the children. When I come on in the kitchen for worshiping, singing, praising God. And I said, Lord, I wish I could have had a upbringing like that. I wish, Lord, I could have been in a Christian school and, and heard your name mentioned every minute of the day and praise and worship every morning. It's a great privilege to go to this church, but to go to this school is a great privilege. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'll just finish that now. He says, don't waver with our faith, for he has promised is faithful. He says, let's consider one another. Are we doing that? We live in a society where it's all about me. I worry about you, brother. About me. We've got to consider one another. Lovely brother prayed this morning about a brother going blind. That's all we've got to do. We've got to pray for one another. Lift one another up. Consider one another. In everything we do. Brother, you're right. Sister, you're right. Let's consider one another in order to stir up love. Stir the love up, brothers, sisters. Stir the love up in our church. Stir the love up. Let's share the love of Jesus, not just with our church, with those on the outside. Stir the love up. Stir the love up. And good works. And I love this one. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Keep coming together. Keep doing things through the week, not just Sunday. I bless him, Brewana. We have meetings through the week. We have Tuesday night, Wednesday night, ladies, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and after each Saturdays. But I'm blessed when brothers send me verses on the phone. And nine times out of ten, the verses that I need for that day. We could all do that. We could all share verses with one another at scripture for the day and, and just building one another up. Come on. Building one another up. Now the men are some, but exhorting one another daily. And here it is again. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Do we see the day approaching, my people? My brothers and sisters? Do we? Well, if you don't, you need to put a bit of ice all on your eyes and clean them up. Because the day is approaching. And it's approaching fast. Sometimes that, the things that are stopping us from seeing the coming of our Jesus is we love in our life so much. We've got so much. I don't want the Lord to come yet. He said he's coming. He's not going to be late. He's going to be right on time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just share this with you before I finish. You know, about time up, brother? Yeah, but uh, like I said, I love to see young people serving the Lord. Like I was blessed this morning. Last River Convention, we were at uh, Dubbo, the final, final uh, convention. We had that three days in Dubbo. And about 35 people come to the Lord at Dubbo. And on the last night, Sunday night, uh, a call was given and, and a young man came up to the front and a young boy, 13-year-old, came to the front. So I went over to him and I counseled him and I prayed with him and he accepted the Lord. And it's just, it's just a blessing. But, but then there's a further blessing. I returned back to Dubbo a couple of weeks ago. I went to the men's Bible study on the Wednesday night. And the first bloke that was there when I walked in was this young 13-year-old boy with the Bible in his hand with the biggest smile on his face. And I just said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our young people need Jesus. There's nothing in this world to offer but Jesus Christ. And I pray that this church will be a church where the light shines bright. Salt will always be there. And we'll be a church to encourage one another. We need one another. I need you in my life. Reconciliation is found in Jesus Christ and nothing else. Nothing else. I shared with that. I won't share any more with that, but true reconciliation. You are my brother and my sister. 
Skin colour don't come into it. It's the blood of Jesus that washes us. And you are my true brothers and sisters, the one I'm going to spend eternity with. Amen? Amen. Can I just pray, brother? We'll close our eyes and just thank you, Lord. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the singing this morning, for the beautiful uh, fellowship, Lord Jesus, for your communion. We thank you. Father God, we do pray for this church. And I do pray for Brother Philip, Lord, the pastor of this church, Lord, that you strengthen him and his family, Lord, in ways they've never seen, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. I pray for every member of this church, Lord Jesus, every student, every teacher that comes to the school, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, we need a great moving of the Holy Spirit, Father God, in, in this place, Lord. We see the evidence, Lord, of the Holy Spirit. We see people's lives changed, Lord. Father God, we just ask you to bless this place, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I want to just say thank you for everyone to see this morning. And I just pray you'll strengthen each and every soul, Lord, in a mighty, mighty way. The ways I've never seen, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, may our eyes be open, looking beyond this place to the place that you prepared for us, Lord. Our home, Lord, where our Father is, Lord. Thank you for this hope we have. But I just want to just, once again, Lord, thank you. We pray for this afternoon that the Holy Spirit will lead us in every way, Lord. But Father God, thank you for Greenpoint, for this church, Lord Jesus. May your mighty hand lead these people in ways they've never seen. We ask these things in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Isaac, for uh, bringing uh, that word this morning of lifting our eyes in anticipation and hope of the Lord's return. Uh, we live in a chaotic world that can often get us down and trouble us, but to have that hope uh, that Jesus is on the throne and will reign for eternity uh, and will um, gather us together as his people is one that gives us hope and comfort. Thanks for your passion, your heart, your infectious enthusiasm.